as by internet. I want you, if you would, run right quick into a closet or wherever you have to go. And I want you to get a garment. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get a garment that will represent somebody in your house or even represent yourself because I'm here to tell you that God is going to give you an unexpected miracle in an unconventional way. Somebody, every time I say that, every time I say that, somebody ought to go to praise and God, that God is going to give us an unexpected miracle in an unconventional way. I'm not looking for it in a conventional way. I'm just looking for the miracle. Somebody give God a praise if you believe you're about to get it. Somebody right there at home give God a praise if you believe that you're about to get it. Somebody standing in this building give God a praise if you believe that you're about to get it. Oh, Rabbi Kasey. Hallelujah. You may be seated. My God, my God, my God, my God. want to finish the text because the conclusion of what God was ministering earlier today is still in that same chapter. When you look at the scripture in the book of St. John, the fifth chapter, if you would turn there with me please. In the book of St. John, the fifth chapter. This is after the man received his healing. And Jesus went in search of the man. The Bible said he found him in the crowd. And when he located him, the most profound thing that I have read in this text prophet of God is that the Bible said that after he found him he spoke these words to him and the Amplified Bible reads it the way that I would have wanted to receive it he said stop sinning oh y'all didn't hear that y'all didn't hear that he said stop sinning or a rush of thing will come upon you. So in reading that text, we understand that where he was was a result of what he had done. And God said, stop doing it or a worse thing will come upon you. So therefore, sickness and disease and disorder comes in on the veins of sin and when we sin the blood life is stopped and the healing the healing the healing began to vanish and so then we have to come back again asking for more healing thank God I'm Oshaya when if we just ask for Jesus to save me. I don't have to spend my Christian life praying about my disorders. I just said something right there. See, God needs help in the kingdom. He needs people that he can depend upon to bring a t-shirt to the altar on behalf of somebody else. But if you got to keep on coming back to God about your disorder then when is God going to ever get an opportunity to use you to break the spirit of disorder off of somebody else's life? Who am I preaching to today? Who am I preaching to today? And so the Lord, I believe, has released me to be here this weekend to say to the believer, stop sinning so we can get our work done. Stop sinning 
so that your sons and your daughters can come out of the world. Stop sinning so that sicknesses and diseases in hospitals can be dried up at your very presence. Hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. So that brings me to the text tonight in the book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, number third chapter in the 11th verse. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter and the 11th verse. Hope I shake it in the Messiah. The part that I want to, part that I want to focus on in this scripture is when he said, for the Lord has planted eternity in the hearts of men so that men would not find out from the beginning what the Lord has already done. Now that right there will preach by itself. Because eternity is in my heart then I may not look like it, but I'm really a finished work. So then my, my battle and my warfare is not because I'm not complete. It is because there is an enemy that don't want me to know that I'm complete. Because if I ever realize how complete I am, then I'll act different and I'll walk different. Y'all yeah, ain't saying nothing. And then I'll talk different. And then I will not be subjected to a lot of dumbness that the devil presents to me. Because I can recognize that ain't me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. See, that's what, that's, what, that's what has happened to you in your walk with God and in your salvation from the Lord. He brings your mind to realize that ain't me. And I don't have to be that. Because I'm coming to realize uh, that there is something else that God had in mind when he made me. And I refuse to be anything less than what God said I'm supposed to be. <laughs> So then, so then, man of God, how do I get there? How do I get there? How do I get there? Do I, do I, somebody said, well, you know what, I always go to church and I'm always, you know, I'm always coming to the services and I'm always, uh, you know, reaching for God. But, but, but see, we're talking about, uh, Bishop, that's, that's, that space. That space. Let me read to you something that, that I wrote this afternoon from some things that I that I read before I recognized the miracle the miracle of the Sabbath when I recognized that there was a difference than asking the Lord to come into my day than the Lord calling me into his day oh my God somebody better say something right there somebody better say something right there Come on here, somebody. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm asking the Lord to come into my day. But when it comes Friday, the Lord is asking me to step over into his day. Oh, come on, somebody. That's the day that I step over in God. I'm not talking about just in the presence. But I step over into God himself. <laughs> Some people, some people even fight. They fight the Sabbath without even knowing what it is. Oh, well, that ain't nothing but a, but an old Jewish thing that, that everybody's talking about. That ain't nothing but something Jewish. But the word Sabbath derives from the word Shabbat. And Shabbat is one of the names of God. And so I'm not stepping into a presence. I'm stepping into Him. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. And so when I refuse to step into him, then guess what? It's not a command that I do it, but I'm missing an opportunity to know what it feels like to be in God. To be, to be, to be, to be, to be in God for a day. I said to be in God for a day. To be in God. <laughs> to be in God for a day. Why? Why, why, watch this, watch this, watch this. 
because we are living in a time now where, where we think that power well, would, Dr. Bynum, what does this got to do with the, with the t-shirts? <laughs> what does this got to do with the t-shirts? Because cause it's after six o'clock. But we were asked to do it in the Sabbath. And when we agreed before the t-shirt got in this building, the work was already sitting on the altar waiting for it. No, no, y'all better, somebody better open up your mouth. Because see, what I'm trying to help you to understand, that it is the asking and the yes, Lord, that completes the work. It's not when I see it, but it's when he say it. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And the minute my mind and my spirit begin to agree with God, the work was already done because God said you did it when I told you to do it man of God can I prove that in the scripture yo, yo, y'all sit down, sit down can I prove that in the scripture can I prove that in the scripture the amplified Bible said that, 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 that when God called Abram to sacrifice Isaac the Bible said in the amplified Bible that as Abram headed up the mountain to the sacrifice. It said in his mind, Isaac was already dead. See that y'all, come on somebody. Come on here. The reason why you walked a t-shirt in this building, cause in your mind, it was already done. I, 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 are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? And if you don't have that mentality, you might as well come get your t-shirt. But the Bible said, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a reward to those that diligently I know, I know Bishop said, don't work me hard, but I can't, I can't help myself. Hold up, I shake it. Hey, son of my Sunday. When you think you're doing the work, then you get tired. But let me make an announcement. I'm not tired tonight. I done preached it the third time, but I'm not tired tonight. Because when it's done in the supernatural, and you don't invite the flesh to join in with something that is supernatural, you don't feel tired. You feel empowered. The Sabbath, the day that no flesh is allowed. Oh, God, I say some of y'all, some of y'all ain't got that because, because to you, power is to attain in the world space. And what you don't realize is space is terminated when the timeline is up. Okay, I'm not. You ain't. You ain't powerful because because you work for the White House. That space, when your time is up, you're going to be terminated. You ain't powerful because, I'm not hearing y'all, because of what you drive. Because when the time limit is up, you're going to trade that in and get something else. But the only thing that cannot be traded in is time. Because guess what? God is not space. He's not in space. He's in time. I, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me and so if you don't ever spend time with God uh, you won't receive from God uh, because he's not the God of space uh, he's the God of time and so a lot of people come to church and want a two hour service because you didn't come to get in God in time you came to get in space who am I talking to right there who am I talking to right there uh, I, I, came, I, came, I came to get in space I came because of space. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When I come because of space, then I, I count time. I'm not hearing you. When I come because of space, then I count time. When I'm a space Christian, I want service to be out in 45 minutes. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Even though it took you a lifetime to get in the mess you're in, you want God to get you out in 45 minutes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. When you a space person, come on somebody, you sit in church watching your watch. But when you a time person, you get so lost in the spirit that you don't even know you've been there five hours. You don't even know you've been there ten hours. Who am I talking to? Because I'm not seeking space. I'm speaking the God of time. Can I, can I, can I, can I have 15 more minutes? Can I have 15 more minutes? And so space people are thingy people. They are thingy people. I'm overworking because I need my things. I don't have time to stop and trust God because I need my things. I don't have time to give God no time because even though I go to church and I say I'm saved, I really don't trust Him. You know how I know I don't trust Him? Because I don't trust Him to stop working for one day. As if a day gonna make a difference because I don't trust him enough to know that the rest of the six days what I'm going to receive is because I stopped this day. I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to? The reason why I'm gonna have strength to do what I do for the next six days because I went inside of him and now when I come out, I'm coming out with power that the earth don't know about. I'm not giving you I'm coming out with wisdom that haven't been revealed in the earth realm. And people will say, where did you get that? And you will say, I got it from time. What I got, I didn't get from space. I know what my credit report said. So in other words, I had to leave space. And I had to go in time. Because space has terminated my name in the system. In the system, I lost my space. I don't have enough money for that house. And I don't have enough money for that car. And my credit won't get me a loan because space have determined my destiny. So do I stop here and stay in the projects and stay in debt? Or do I leave this day and go in time? Where I get my name renewed. See, y'all ain't saying nothing right there because I can shout all by myself. Now, that one right there, that one right there, I don't need no praise to break on. Who am I talking to? Uh -uh. I don't need you to help me because I'm here to tell you that in time, in time, space says I'm finished. Time said you just begun. You better open up your mouth and understand what God is saying about who you got on this altar. Oh my God. Space say he's a drug addict. Space say she ain't going to be nothing. Space say you are finished. But in time. People that don't spend time with God don't know timing how you gonna know timing when you don't know time I'm gonna show you something sit down I'm gonna show you something I'm, I'm, I'm 10 minutes from being finished I remember I'd lost everything I had and I didn't have a car and God gave me the message I didn't read it from nobody he said I want you to spend Sabbaths and I said well God I really don't know what that is 
in the sense of knowing it. He said, read it. And I said, okay, I'll read it. After I start spending time, my friends and family thought that it was a fad. So when I, when I said 18 minutes to 6, I'm going to be with God for 24 hours. They start calling. Well, can you do this? And can you do that? And can you help me with my rent? And can you help with me a light bill? And somebody else would call. And preachers would call. And after a while, at 18 minutes to 6, I start turning my phone off. Because I said, if you don't catch me before 6 o'clock on Friday, you will have to see me on Monday. Because not only now do I celebrate uh, the Jewish Sabbath, I celebrate the Christian Sabbath too. So I'm 48 hours out of contact. Uh -huh, because the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah that on this day, he gives me the permission to be free from my burdens. I'm not to bring uh, any pressure in my life. I'm not giving y'all. When the clock strikes six, I'm to give up what I'm worrying about. I'm to let go of what I'm concerned about. And I'm to take myself into time so I can be renewed. Am I, am I, am I helping anybody? Am I helping anybody? That's why you're weak. That's why you're shaking. That's why your nerves is bad. Good Lord have mercy. That's why God can't use you because you all used up. I'm not hearing y'all. That's because uh, you don't know the power of being refreshed. And don't tell me you can't do it. I'm getting to this t-shirt. I got seven minutes. When I start spending time. It's like I got the. The rhythm of heaven in my spirit. How did I know I was in the rhythm of heaven? Because the earth realm was saying no. And heaven was saying yes. So one of my goddaughters said to me, Mother, it seemed like you know a secret. She said, it don't look like you really going through what you're going through. Because you act like you know a secret. I said, I do. I said, oh, shake it, both shall you. I said, because I do. Because I know that Jesus said that I am the resurrection. If anybody believe in me, uh, though his name is dead, uh, yet shall it also live. I'm not hearing y'all. See, y'all, y'all, y'all missed the point to praise God right there. Because whatever the devil has agreed to be dead, you better start praising God. Because I am the resurrection. I am not your boss not your job who am I talking to not the bank I am I, he said get up go to the bank so I want you to go find you a car I said what kind he said start with what you had I found a Range Rover. <laughs> See, some, some of y'all been praying and asking the Lord to bless you. And the reason why he hasn't, because you asking him under your grade. Because you're afraid to ask for what you really deserve. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I preaching to? So you go get a little sugar bug somewhere. Tell my this will do. No ma'am, it won't do. Because what I drive, where I live, is part of my identity in Christ. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Who am I talking to? I'm not no sugar bug in God. It ain't who I am. So I picked out the truck and went to the place where they said, you have to go over here to this credit union because these people over here is who approve our loans. So I told my sister, I said, come go with me. She said, I don't feel like, I went back in the room, I said, the Lord said, come go with me. She said, but I don't play with you when you said the Lord said. So she put her clothes on. Cause see, it ain't nothing worse than two broke people being in the same house. 
I'm not hearing y'all talk to me because one of y'all got to decide that we going to get up and we going to do something about where we are. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Who am I talking to? The Lord brought you in here today because when you get back home, you going to start straightening up stuff, throwing out raggedy furniture, telling everybody in the house, believe God or you got to get out of here. Who am I talking to right now? Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. And I'm going to say it. That Sabbath. That Sabbath will give you guts. That Sabbath will make you bold. When you come out of the presence of God, you bold. When I got to the, to the place, the girl said, who are you here to see? So I said, I'm here about the loan over at the car dealership. She said, well, wait a minute. She said, what's your name? I said, well, I need to buy them. She said, I'll be back. She came back. About five minutes later, she said, excuse me, what you said your name was? I said, well, I need to buy them. She said, okay, I'll be right back. She came back. Stayed going for a long time, Bishop. She came back. She said, they'll see you now. I said, okay. So I get in there, and I sit down. One of the time, I had a little coat on and stuff. I sat down in there, me and my sister. And the lady said, one second. I said, okay. She got up and she left out. When she came back, she had two more ladies with her. When they shut the door, you know how them offers they had a Venetian blinds. They closed the Venetian blinds. I said, well, Lord, well, what is this? Because I know I'm like filing bankruptcy. I owe everybody. Is they getting ready to arrest me or something? I'm saying, well, what, what is going on up in here? They shut the blinds. She said, is you the one need to buy them that preach? I said, yeah. She said, hey, shut up, oh, shut. She said, we've been waiting for a word from God. Love y'all. <laughs> She said, will you pray for us? Baby, I took my coat off. I started preaching and praying and prophesying. When I got through, and they got through speaking in tongues and crying, they said, what you coming here for? I said, I need a car. They said, you got it. And what she got? I said, she need a car too. And her credit, and I walked out with a Range Rover. My sister walked out. Oh, come on here, somebody. With a Cadillac Escalade. Why? Because she was with me. Why? Because I came from the presence of the Lord. Because I spent time with him. I knew timing. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Because I got to say one more thing. My credit was 454. Wasn't nobody going to give me nothing. But I didn't need credit. Because the presence from spending time was what was sitting on me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Talking about who owned this altar right here. Talking about. I'm going to ask you the question that Jesus asked again. Are you serious? Are you serious about where you want to go? Are you serious about who you got on this altar? Then if you're serious, then I close with this. Then what on this altar and your giving God a bow to spin? That's why some of y'all ain't got nothing to spin because you won't spend time. You'll catch that over your head. And it has to take precedence. Then spending time. Baby, I know you're listening to me, so I'm going to just preach to you just in case everybody wants me. It has to be superior over everything. It has to take first priority. It has to have supremacy. You don't hear me. It has to prevail. And it has to override. Watch this. It has to have the ability to roughshod. Meaning to sit on and control the movement of. Come on here somebody. Me spending this day with God. It's got to 
give me the power to sit on my life and control its movement. Are you hearing me? Then it, oh y'all, then it says, then it says, to, watch this, to interrupt the action of an automatic device, typically in order, watch this, in order to take manual control. I got to get my life out of automation so I can take manual control so I can tell my life that at 6 p.m. on Friday we stop now watch this I know what I'm talking about when God called me away on this sabbatical closing with this because some of y'all some of y'all looking like ooh that's just so much. <laughs> well, what if that's your job and you got to work? Then your posture has to be as such that I'm here because I need to be. Because they said they'll fire me. But my spirit is somewhere else. And when I get off, the phone stay off. When God called me to do this, because see, some of y'all ain't as drastic as I am. Because when I know God is talking to me, he's just talking to me. He told me to come away, and I did. And they kept calling, they kept texting, they kept calling, they kept texting. And I kept texting back, Bishop, saying, I'm with the Lord. I can't, I can't be interrupted. Just one more thing. Can you help me? Just one more thing. Can you send us some grocery money? I, I said, y'all, I'm with the Lord. I tell my friends, I, I can't. God, God is doing something. I'm so sorry I can't call. Then three days later, I'm thinking about you. <laughs> I'm praying for you. How you do? I jumped up and went in the bathroom and tried to flush my phone down the toilet. <laughs> when it wouldn't flush, I ran outside and threw it up a brick wall. When it didn't break, I took off running to the ocean and I threw it in the ocean and I said, now text the ocean because I'm not about to miss my time with God. I'm not giving you. God is calling me to do this and I may not ever get this opportunity again. I may not ever get an opportunity for him to say, come away with me, my beloved. I threw my phone in the ocean. I lost numbers. I lost pictures. I lost texts, but I didn't lose my time with God I quit I quit because I know it's kind of hard for some of y'all because you know when I went to Tobago I was sick with my lungs See, do you, do you, do, do you, do you, do you seriously want results from this? For real? I was sick with my lungs. And we went out to eat one night. This is kind of comical, but it's real. I saw some souvenirs and I said, stop the car, I want to get some souvenirs. And a girl came out, head all tied up. She was pregnant. She said she had a toothache, had on some flip-flops and some jogging pants and a two little t-shirt and she, she was holding her job. Can I help you? I said, I said, I want, I want that t-shirt and I want this and I want that, I want that. She said, you here vacation? She's still flipping. You here vacation? I said, no, not really. Ah, oh, what you here for? I said, well, I had a little lung problem. And uh, she said, what's wrong? <laughs> like, 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 what kind of problem? I said, well, my lungs, one of my lungs collapsed. My mother had that. My, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. She said, she told me, have you ever heard of honey man? I said, no. Okay, there's a man on this island, and he, uh, he like raised bees and stuff, and he collect honey. But the part that he get 
It'll heal you. It'll, it'll do something for your lung because my mother had that. I said, oh, wow. She said, you should try it. I said, well, one day I will. She said, one minute. She went in the back and came back, Bishop, with the honey. She opened up. She said, heal. And like a dummy, I said, <laughs> she stuck it in my mouth. She said, swallow it. Now, this is a stranger. This is a stranger. But I guarantee you, in less than 10 minutes, I took a deep breath. I started dancing. I said, good God. Have it. She said, I told you, it's an unexpected miracle in an unconventional way. I didn't know her. Are you hearing me? But I did what she gave me. I don't... I couldn't have told you what she stuck down my throat. <laughs> and my people that was with me said, Providence, you done lost your mind. You don't even know that girl. You don't even know what you smell her. I said, but it was the authority that she said it in. She said, huh? And I said, what am I trying to say? The reflex in your spirit will cause you to believe it. Even if it don't look like what it used to look like. Who am I talking to in here today? You better give God a praise. Because everything he said that he was going to do on this altar, he going to do it. Somebody give him a praise. It's the Lord. It's the Lord said, huh? It's the Lord said, huh? It's the Lord said, open up your spirit and take this. Now I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. I need your strings. You got in the Sabbath for this t-shirt just in time. Wow. At the time the word was given, the word was done. I'm not praying, hoping that God would do something. Lord. I'm agreeing to touch it as your confirmation that it's already done. I'm gonna give you one one secret that you may not realize. When you brought it and put it on the altar. It was your faith. Yeah. <laughs> See, I can't get nobody to say nothing. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I said, when you walked it down the aisle and you put it on the altar, it was your faith that touched the hem of his garment. Who am I talking to up in here? Who am I talking to up in here? Because you ain't looking at something now that just sitting on this altar. That's not a t-shirt. That's a breakthrough. Who am I talking to? You better give God a praise. That's not just a shirt. That's a testimony. And you will have a testimony. Somebody give God a praise. Give him a shout right now. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. I need two ushers to do something for me. Two ushers come to me. Matter of fact, Bishop, bring me two intercessors. Pick two intercessors. I need two intercessors to do something for me. Whoever you choose, Bishop. Stand right here, man of God. Stand right here. 
I need two people that you trust. Come down here with me. I need everybody to sit down so you can see. I'm going to start on this side. I need you all to start taking whatever is in plastic out of plastic and sticking the plastic underneath it. Because he didn't tell me to touch plastic. It didn't say by the plastic that they wore. It said by the cloth. I have to touch the cloth. Kendana na Messiah. Everybody that put a t-shirt on that side of the room, stand up. When I start on that side of the room, if you don't have a t-shirt on that side of the room, sit down. Because everybody that do has to see that side of the room. When I touch your t-shirt, I want you to turn around and tell your neighbor, now I know it's done. Now I know it's done. Kora ma shige. Hera ma saya. Kore ba kosege. Kanda da 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 ba hasi. Dede 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 dede. Kanda da da ba haya. Kore ma kasi. Kore ma kasi. You at home. Get your t-shirt. Lay your t-shirt across the keys of your laptop. Kore ba kosete ba ba shaya. The power of God is coming through your laptop. The power of God is coming through that television. And when you put your hands on it as a contact with what God is doing in this building, you ain't going to never be the same. And the person that put it on will never be the same. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Everybody begin to pray in the spirit. Everybody begin to pray in the spirit. Yes, Lord. Begin to pray in the spirit. Put the plastic back under their garments so they'll know that they're theirs. Just sit right here. He said divine miracles. He said divine miracles. Unbelievable miracles. The end of the text of that chapter says that God is still working and He never stopped working and He will always work. Somebody praise Him when I say that. God is still working. He will keep working and He will never stop. God is still working. He will always be working and he will never stop. Somebody give him a praise right there. Come on, push. Who 
The apostle and the prophet A prophetic combination One to prophesy And the other to establish That is done Who can shut to you Saja He shut up Who shall not say You poor here and go that way And I'm coming behind you Somebody begin to shout Because the oil is being poured Somebody begin to shout Yeah, yeah
give God the praise. Somebody give God the praise. Give him the praise for profound victory. Give him the praise for an unmistakable trend. Give him the praise for Shalabi. Yes, Shalabi. Where are you? I'm looking for you. Where 
for you. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The blood is looking for you. The blood is looking for you. The blood, the blood is looking for you. The blood is looking for you. Somebody in here go to praising God. Can I get some prayer warriors to pray for them? Can I get some prayer warriors to pray for them? Somebody go to praising God for soul. Somebody praise God for soul. then we legally don't have a church. The commission that I'm being instructed to leave you with, pray souls in to this ministry. Clapped, but I don't know if you heard me. There's an explosion that's about to happen in this church. And it's going to happen because of souls. I prophesy that the days of spiritual maintenance is over. I hear the Lord saying, all of the elders, the evangelists of this ministry, step forward. All of the leaders, people that work the altars, people that teach, about them somebody has made what they do about it raising my self esteem but God said tonight put it on the altar because you were chosen not to build you but to build the kingdom 
And if you don't have the power to build the kingdom, resign. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. If you don't have the power and the authority to win a soul, if you can come to church after two months and you have never brought anybody in this building to be saved, you are missing your call. You're not called just to be an usher. You're not called just to hold the front row seat. You're not called just to line up in the hallway. Show Bishop that you support him. The support comes when you're about his mission. And his mission is souls. And when the souls stop coming, When the revival and the desperation for the blood of Jesus to hit somebody's life is no longer your priority, then it's time for you to come back to the altar. When the Lord releases me to come back, when the Lord releases me to come back, Bishop, I saw in the Holy Ghost. I was in this building with nobody but the leaders. Hold on, I'm Catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. you hearing that? Catch on fire. Oh, I don't know if y'all listen. Are you hearing this? Catch on fire. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing him? Catch on fire. Are you hearing this? Catch on fire. Now every leader begin to give God a shout on this altar. And I speak it in the name of Jesus. That God, that you would allow every leader to catch on fire. Shout!
Tchau! better give God praise because he just gave birth to fire starters. You better give God praise because he just gave birth to fire starters.
this reason the Jews began to persecute, annoy, torment Jesus and sought to kill him because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But here is a scripture that you will take home and that you will hold dear to your heart and your spirit. The 17th verse of the 5th chapter. But Jesus answered them, My Father has worked even until now. He has never ceased working. He is still working. And I too must be at divine work. The Lord himself. My father. He has worked. Even until now. He is still working. And now Jesus is saying to us tonight. That I myself. Must be at divine work. Which means. What is going to happen to all of us. After these days of being in his presence on the Sabbath is going to be a divine work. Turn around. You're not going to know how. You don't want to smoke no more. You're not going to know how. How your appetite has changed. You're not going to know how. How you've been reintroduced. To your correct sexuality is going to be a divine thing.
Ha! All the way. Do I have a church in here? All the way. Everybody say yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Now give him a praise right there. some envelopes. I feel it. I feel it quick. I feel it quick. What am I getting ready to sow into? I'm getting ready to make a commitment with my heart. Wheresoever my treasure is, also lies my heart. I'm going to make a commitment with my heart that I will start working my way toward a full salary. I gotta work my way to it. It's to the point now where everywhere I travel, I carry my own Sabbath with me in every hotel, mother. I spread it out, light my candles, and take communion. Because I believe in its works. I believe when I go into God I go in depleted but in 24 hours I've come out fulfilled I 
I go in depleted, come out full. Because I made a decision to press into the glory. It's a price that I'm willing to pay. I said this last night to my two spiritual daughters and now I will say it to you. I go into that presence so I can behold my Savior because when he calls me home I want to know what he looks like. I want my eyes to become familiar what I'm living to die to see. That's why when I go places and they say, what do you want us to do about security when you're on the floor preaching? I said my greatest joy would be to die doing what he called me to do. You can't kill me. I'm already dead. sticky on my computer after I read the story of Stephen and the sticky said this when it's my time to see Jesus 